Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a delicious Italian cream cake. So let's get started. First off, we're doing some prep work. This recipe calls for pecans and coconut in the cake, but tastes so much better when the pecans are toasted. Get six ounces or 170 grams of pecans, and they could be chopped or whatever. And now, these are gonna go into the oven 350 for maybe eight minutes or until they're fragrant. Make sure you move them around, not with your fingers though, because the outside toasts first. Okay, into the oven. While my pecans are toasting, I'm buttering and flouring three eight inch pans. This cake is so good. And the nice thing is it actually releases pretty easily. You don't have to do parchment paper rounds in your uh, baking pans. If you wanted to, you could definitely use baking spray, but I actually do prefer buttering and flouring. Just get some good coverage. You see here? A tablespoon or two of flour is all you need to get these pans nice and uh, prepped. Few things are as disappointing as a cake that's stuck in the pan, so the prep work is actually really important. Setting these aside, and now it's time for the dry ingredients. In a large bowl, I want two and a third cups of all-purpose flour. Ooh, that's 280 grams. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. If you're using a fine salt, use less because that means it's gonna be saltier one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Thank you, scale. We're gonna give this a good whisk. In case you're wondering, Italian cream cake isn't actually an Italian cake, it's a Southern recipe. The first mention of it, it was in Texas in the 30s, and it's just thought that it was an Italian baker who invented it, and it is mind-blowingly delicious. I developed this recipe because some viewers requested it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is one of the best things ever. The coconut and pecans with the cream cheese frosting is like, Ah, chef's kiss. Now we're ready for the wet ingredients. Starting off with two thirds of a cup of butter, that's 152 grams, along with one half a cup of vegetable shortening, that's 96 grams. We're using vegetable shortening in this cake, one, because that's the traditional way you do it in Italian cream cakes, and two, because using vegetable shortening is gonna give us a fluffier, more tender crumb. The cake's gonna rise and just have a little bit better texture. If you don't like vegetable shortening, just use half a cup of butter extra. Lock that off. We're gonna mix this up for a little bit just so it's really well combined. And in the meantime, we'll be separating out six eggs. We're gonna use both the whites and the yolks. It's like I'm diffusing a bomb right now. <laughs> Careful. So the best way to do this is to have three bowls. I just can't do any more dishes. I gotta put me first. <laughs> just dump each white out into a separate bowl in case a yolk breaks. If a yolk did break, just try and act fast and get it all out. My eggs are separated, the shortening and the butter are combined, and now we're gonna add 400 grams or two cups of granulated sugar. It's a big cake, lots of portions, so use a lot of ingredients. Now we're going to mix this on medium, medium high for three minutes until it's light and fluffy. Have those yolks ready because they go in next. We can definitely scrape the bowl down at least once. Yeah, I rarely use shortening, but it's true, it does give you like a really fluffy, tender crumb. It's because of the different way it melts. It melts at a higher temperature, and it also uh, traps more air than butter. But you can make this cake with all butter. I'm adding the yolks in one at a time. Just make sure they mix up before you add the next. And we're all done. So if you look down, beautiful golden yellow color, you see very pale butter colors just because it's not mixed. So one last scrape down. <laughs> I was like, is there two teaspoons in here? <laughs> okay, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I have more in the pantry, don't worry. And three quarters of a teaspoon of almond extract. I love almond extract. I hope you have it in your pantry too. It's so good, but it's very powerful. So use it sparingly. This cake is funny because now we're gonna add the flour and the buttermilk in alternating batches, but what about those egg whites? They get folded in last and they totally change the consistency of the batter. So with the mixer running on its lowest setting, I'm adding in the flour mixture and alternating with the buttermilk. It's like three flour, two buttermilks. It didn't mix in all the way. I don't want it to mix in all the way because I'm sure it needs one scrape down. It totally does. Come take a look at this. Totally unmixed. It's just use a spatula to finish batters off. And we're gonna be adding the egg whites in here so it doesn't have to be totally great, just mostly there. I really wanna make sure there's no big pockets of butter or big pockets of flour, just a couple streaks. This gets set aside. Our egg whites are gonna get whisked up until they are so fluffy they look like little clouds. 
Now I'm adding my six egg whites right into this clean bowl with my clean whisk. I'm gonna mix this up until we have really stiff, beautiful white peaks. While that happens, those toasted pecans are nice and cool so they can get a good chop right now. Just like a nice medium chop, not super tiny, not super big. You want some good crunch in this cake. It's so melt in your mouth, the play of textures is really nice. And pecans are like a million times better when they're toasted. They are so fragrant and delicious. Oh, perfect timing. You can tell it's stiff because it'll stick to the beater in the bowl. It'll look like this, like that is a stiff cloud of egg white. There's a problem though. This fairly like thick, dense-ish batter. This is super light. So what we have to do is lighten the batter with a third of the egg whites, just like that. You're gonna fold this in, understanding that many of these bubbles will burst, but in the process, the batter will get lighter and easier to fold the rest of that in. Okay, you can see here, the streaks are starting to disappear and this batter looks much lighter now. That looks nice. Now we can add the rest of this in two batches. You have to be patient and gentle when you're folding in egg whites because the whole point is to make a fluffy, light, melt in your mouth, amazing cake. And if you crunch them all, it's not gonna do anything. And when I fold, it's not like a mix. What I'm doing is scraping down the bottom, bringing it up and cutting down. So you're making like a figure eight almost inside. It does take a little bit of time, but it is so worthwhile. All gone, now it's time for our magical ingredients. That is those toasted crushed pecans. Mmm, well they're chopped, not crushed. And this coconut. Just read my recipe and these were supposed to go in earlier but it's gonna be fine, don't worry. <laughs> one cup of those chopped pecans. Ah! And one cup of the sweetened coconut flakes. Just gonna fold this in. We're just distributing the nuts and coconut. <laughs> we're gonna divide this between our three pans evenly. If you want, you can break your scale out or just eyeball it. Let's get that batter in there. I feel like renaming this John's Friendship Cake. I made this for a friend of mine and she was like, oh, this is my new favorite cake. And I was like, yes. <laughs> And don't you dare waste any of this batter. It's so delicious. So in each pan, it's about a kilo of um, batter. Let's give it a little bit of a level. Cakes will level in the oven, but you just don't want to risk it when it's a layer cake. <laughs> you want that layer cake to be nice and even, not lopsided. This is optional, but I'm popping my cake strips on to give you a really nice even bake with uh, layers that aren't burnt on the edge. These guys go into the oven 350 degrees for about half an hour or until the edges are pulling away from the pan and they have a little spring in the center. Cakes are out of the oven. You can see they're pulling away from the edge we're gonna let these sit here for 15 minutes. It's time to unmount them. This could be stressful, but I wanna show you how to get them out with more ease. Get a little knife and just run it around the edge in case any bit is stuck. We don't like that. Then give it a little tap on the side. This will help the cake just get unstuck if it is stuck. And once you see it moving around, it's time to flip it over. Get the rest of the layers out. And in the meantime, while they finish cooling, we're gonna be toasting up some coconut and making our frosting. About maybe like half a cup or even a cup of coconut can get toasted. Just break it up into little pieces, spread it out, and 350 for like five minutes, check it up. You're gonna mix it a couple of times. The edge will burn, the center will be white. You want it uniformly toasted in golden brown. So just, um, you know, keep an eye on it. Shift it around every few minutes. I'm adding a little bit more because I'll be sneaking a bite. <laughs> into the oven and now we can make the frosting. My cake layers are just about cool, so now it's time to make a luscious, amazing cream cheese frosting. So one and a half cups of butter, 340 grams. This should be room temperature and I'm using unsalted butter. I'm also using two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese, that's 226 grams. Basically I'm adding everything into the mixing bowl that's not sugar and we're gonna cream it up so it's really nice and homogenous. I don't want any pockets of butter or pockets of cream cheese. It should be all the way mixed through. The three layer eight inch cake is a big cake for a lot of people, so we need a good amount of frosting for that. All right, plop a paddle attachment on. While it mixes, I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons of a nice vanilla. This should be on medium low speed. You don't wanna mix too much air into the frosting. Scrape that bowl down. We wanna have no pockets of butter or cream cheese before we add our sugar in. And right now, it's gonna look a little bit cheesy, if you will. <laughs> 
has like a almost cottage cheese texture to it. Don't worry about that. The sugar is gonna fix everything. So for the frosting, I'm using seven cups or 840 grams of powdered sugar. You could add this in in a few batches. And today I will not be sifting it out just because this is a brand new bag. Doesn't look like it's lumpy. Mix it on low. Once it looks like it's mostly incorporated, we're gonna add more and then do that until all the sugar is mixed in. I'll increase the speed every once in a while for a second just to like throw some of the frosting off of the beater. Right now, I'm gonna walk away, do a couple dishes. The key to a nice silky frosting is to go low and slow. So don't go on high for long periods of time. That's just gonna beat a lot of air into it and your frosting is gonna be full of bubbles. We want a creamy, beautiful, delicious frosting with a great mouthfeel. Just giving it a quick scrape down and then we're gonna add our last bit of powdered sugar in. If you're worried about the decoration, don't be. I'm gonna guide you through it and give you all the tips to make your cake look super pretty with almost no effort. A few minutes later and this cheesy mess became silky and amazing. Look at this texture, it's so nice. This is the lusciousness you want from a cream cheese frosting. Now comes the fun part, assembling and decorating your cake. So first off, grab a dollop of frosting and spread it on the bottom. That's the glue to hold everything so it doesn't slide around. Your first layer goes on, center it up. And now we want about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup of frosting in between each layer. So spread it out. Maybe a little bit more, I like a lot of frosting. <laughs> Continue building the cake. Last piece goes on. This cake is so tender and amazing. I'm gonna have to like try and not eat the whole thing myself. Now for the fun part, we're just gonna scoop more frosting on top and smooth it onto the sides and get a nice base. I wanna tell you, do not worry about getting a perfectly smooth cake because we're covering almost the entire cake with various things. So if it doesn't look perfect, that's fine. Splat it on the sides. <laughs> It's often easier to apply a lot of frosting on top and then smooth it over and work it out to the edge where you can work it down. Right now my cake's covered. I'm gonna use a bench scraper and just finish the side off. Offset's great for the top. If it looks a little bit thin on the side, you can add more, but really it's gonna get covered up with nuts and things, so don't worry about it. To get a nice edge for your cake, use your offset spatula and pull in as you turn slowly and then wipe off in between each stroke. This looks nice. I have about a cup of frosting left over for dollops on top, but first let's get that coconut. This toasted up really nicely. It's mostly golden brown and it looks and tastes amazing. The coconut goes right on top. The bottom edge or skirt of the cake is getting more decoration and that's the rest of our chopped toasted pecans. So just add that onto the bottom and turn the cake adding a skirt onto your cake is a great way to let people know what's inside of it and give it a finished look so it doesn't look so bare. It also hides any mistakes. <laughs> Finish your skirt off just by taking a couple pieces and adding them up higher. It gives you the look of a gradient, which makes it just look a little bit more pretty. Finish the cake off with the remaining frosting. I'm using an 846 tip, but you could use any star tip or do whatever you want. A little wriggly doll, just like that, and it looks great. If you're running low on frosting, just do the dollops further apart. I went conservative on the edge so I could have more for the top. I love the way that looks and it took less than 20 minutes to decorate, start to finish. Mmm, this cake is truly a must bake recipe. I hope you get a chance to make it and if you like this video, check out my cake playlist.